Hello. In this session we will create, animate and move a sprite on Commodore 64. We will also look for some interesting properties about it. Sprites are cool objects that can be moved around on the screen without affecting the background. Anyone who want to create a game have to know how to deal with sprites. Commodore 64 has 8 hardware sprites, so it can move 8 objects simultaneously. Well, actually it can do even better, but we will talk later about that. Sprite is drawn by VIC2, the Commodore 64 microchip controller that handle the graphic. In order to do this task, it fetch data through direct memory access. When this happens, the CPU is freezed and a bad line occurs. Thus, the available cycles for a raster line are between 20 and 23, instead of 63. Let's start talking about the sprite registers. Register D015 enable sprites. If a bit is enabled, the relative sprite number will be drawn onto screen. In this example, we will enable only sprite number zero. Register D01C enable multicolor. If a bit is enabled, the relative sprite number will have multicolor enabled. Multicolor allows Sprite to have two extra colors shared between the other sprites. However, since Sprite will sacrifice some bits for color information, it will lose details about its resolution. The last 8 bytes of the screen memory are dedicated to sprite pointers. Now we are using default memory screen area whose range go from 400 to 800. Thus the sprite pointers stay between memory 07F8 to 07FF. A sprite takes up 63 bytes of data and is aligned to 64 bytes. If we want to point data located at address 2000, we must set 80 hex value to our sprite pointer. Now it's time to set X and Y position values. The screen resolution on C64 is 320 and 200 pixels, while the Y value fits on a byte specified on register D001. The X value is determined by register D000 and a specific bit on D001 that add a delta of 256 if set. The two registers, D017 and D01D, deal with sprite stretch property. If the specific bit of sprite of D017 is set, the height of sprite will double its size. If D01D have the bit set, the sprite will double its width. After we have set the initial sprite properties, we can start creating a loop that wait for raster 255.
Talking about sprite creation tools, there are either native and cross-platform software. I personally prefer the latter solution because even I generally like to develop on native machine, in this case could be too much awkward. So on my side, I often refer to subcrice tools like SpritePad. Even on the free version has a lot of features and the user interface is really comfortable and intuitive. You can easily edit and export sprite data as raw or generate the byte values as text compatible with Turbo Assembler format. Fine. The sprite is correctly shown on screen. Time to animate. We have already definite six sprites to roll in an infinite loop, so I am going to cycle each sprite every quarter of a second. This is how it works. The sprite data initially points at address 2000. Once the delay time is reached, sprite pointer points to next address, which is 2040. And so again, until we reach sprite six. 
If so, we just reset the pointer at initial address and so we repeat the loop infinitely. Okay, now we are taking care of moving the sprite. Let's write the routine for X position. We want the sprite to move horizontally across the entire screen, so we do the trick by applying an exclusive or on bit 0 of D010. Specifically, each time the X value reach pos position 0. For the Y value, we want our ship to slightly oscillate up and down. We are going to use a sign generation routine embedded on our version of Turbo Assembler. We have saved signed data at address 3000. Now we can retrieve this data and bring to our source code. This routine calculate the next Y value according to the 20 values generated previously by the sign generator, so nothing to add.
We will talk about sprite collision now. Specifically, we will show a sprite to background collision, which works on the same way of sprite to sprite collision, except the register involved. First, I am going to create a character on the background so the sprite will pass over it. Now we are going to create the collision routine. Every time one sprite collide to a background object, the specific bit of register D01F will be set. The LSR command will affect the carry flag. If set, then the bit 0 is set as well, thus the collision is detected. We can repeat that command for each sprite as well. In order to prove this, we print a C letter when the sprite collides on the object. Very good. We are trying sprite priority now. The register involved is D01B. By setting the specific bit, we can display the sprite behind the background. Early in the video we talked about sprite stretch property. Let's return to the code previously written and change it so we can see what happens. Nice. Let's image how an old and famous game could look without this property enabled. A bit weird, ain't? Good. Finally, let's talk about a graphics interesting technique called sprite multiplexing. In a few words, is the ability of reuse same sprite and draw it on screen, bypassing the limit of 8. The only limit is that each sprite must be drawn at least 21 lines distant from the other or it won't be displayed. This time I show an example of sprite multiplexing by loading a source of mine called Starfield.
Good. Hope you liked this video and learned something useful. Thanks for watching.